Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam and this is Crafty Blinder Van Build. If you'd like to support our channel and help it grow, please consider subscribing, liking and sending comments. And if you really like a particular video, share it with your friends. Watch today's video right to the end to find out what our fantastic news is. Today's job is fitting the waste tank. Um, obviously, Dolly's having a little look round as well. Hello, Dolly. How are you doing? Hello. You come to help? <laughs> you come to help, sweet dad? Come on. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. So, trial run on the waste tank, offering it up, see where it fits, see where it doesn't fit, see what works, what doesn't work. We're going to change this spout. Um, I think I'm just going to blank that off and we'll put a new a new connection on. Um, we have the shallow connection here, which will pipe up and secure it. And that'll be my U-bend. Stop any nasty smells coming back. So that's to go in there. Had a bit of an issue this morning already. I've used the wrong J-bolts on <laughs> the water tank. So when I come to put these in this morning, I realised that the wrong ones were in play. So I've had to change them too. Yeah. I've changed them too, they're the crack ones in there now. And put the longer ones on here. So there's plenty of room to nip them up there. We'll put some uh, nylon nuts on the end just to secure it a little bit more. But yeah. So looking across I'm gonna use this run here get the waste pipe across to the kitchen and also the sender unit as well so, yeah we'll go on the back side of here as the engines that way so direction of travel all the spray and crap is going to come from this direction so if we mount it behind there there's a less less chance of mud and silt and everything depositing on it Right, we need to mod this tank. We need to put a new pipe connector there. Making it a little bit bigger for the fact that we're running a shower. Um, and I really don't want to run the risk of uh, getting any blockages or backups due to the water not being able to get away. So we've increased the diameter of the pipe. This is a, it's a 38 pipe, waste pipe that we're gonna put in. But yeah, we'll put that hole in. Maybe there, if I can, when I open this up, if there's, if there's an opportunity to remove this existing pipe, I will. But um, how we're going to access the, the tank is I'm going to put a hatch in. This is like a, a deck hatch. Um, there are a couple of quid off the internet. Anyway, that opens up. You glue it and screw it down, and that'll give me enough room to get my hand in. Actually, put it there. Yeah, I'll get my hand in there and we should be alright. These arbors are brilliant. So you screw it round, you line it up with a hole inside, and you screw this up, and that pushes two pins into them holes. Really good. Push a little bit extra, but more if you. You need to swap your arbors over quickly. Yeah. Hole cutters quickly. That's the business. <laughs> you pull up first, it's fine.
coke that I had and it's still not big enough so we need to go around another couple of mil. I'm just using the side of one of my cone cutters. It's really sharp and does the job effortlessly. I'll add a link in the description for all the parts that are used on this tank build. I bet I couldn't do that again if I tried. <laughs> It's almost for the kid. Hmm. Look how thick that tank is. Really thick. You can see it's maybe a AK. See AK, sorry. Take it down to its type, back it off, screw that up, and they just lock into the side on that one. So, let me explain. Right back in the beginning, I wasn't very good at videoing, and this is one of the first videos that I shot, along with a few others. Um, you may notice the black and white and uh, things not in shot, and this is one of them videos where there's nothing in shot, just my big fat head. And currently I'm drilling out the top hose connector so we can fit the new hose connector, the much larger one. So unfortunately you can't see it. I wasn't sure how that was going to pan out but it's uh a lot of the stuff I do is trial and error, so it's nice when something goes to plan. Now we've made all the holes in the tank, it's time to start sealing them up. I've just got a general purpose Evo stick silicon sealant here and it does the job. I think it's called the dog's bollocks or something like that, but it is good. I use it quite a lot. So I'm just going to put a, a really good amount of sealant on here. I want it to squash inside this tank and to make a good seal when I screw it down. 
the hatch is on the top side of the tank um unlike the water tank that's on the bottom side but i decided to put this on the top due to the fact that it it didn't come designed with one so we should never have any water right up to that level and it should never affect it it should never you know even if it gets up to that height it should never affect it and with the new pipe connector it's the same just put plenty on make a good seal do it once and you don't have to come back to visit it again I've even put a little bit on the on the thread there of the nut so when it's in position it should hold it nice and tight I didn't wait for the sealant to go off, I screwed it down straight away, hoping that this will squash it into all the places where it needs to be. Once it's secure, it's then just a matter of cleaning up any excess. Not that it's as important as the freshwater tank, but I just like to clean everything, keep it right. So I'm just hoovering out all the swath from the inside and tidying up the job. While we had it on the bench, I've also glued a T-piece in position, ready to accept all the pipes coming in. So these are the level probes. Basically, when Connections made between these two, your sensor will go into alarm. So I've put it in line with the bottom of the fill so we don't get any uh, liquid coming back down the pipes and, and sitting in the pipes. So time to get this installed. I've actually repurposed my old camping mat. Once the kids had used it as a, um, a trampoline, it ended up with lots of holes in it. But it's ideal for this sort of work. You can lay it on the ground. You can, if it's a nice hot day, it's brilliant. Even if it's a cold day, it's brilliant. It doesn't like the rain too much, but it's, it's been a godsend, to be honest with you. I've connected the shower connection to one end, uh, thinking it would make life a bit easier. But in reality, I should have waited until I was underneath the van and had got the tank in place before starting to fasten things onto it. God only knows what I said then. I think I was talking to myself and asking myself if it was square. It's advised to take your time at this point. Make sure your tank is sitting equally on the brackets. Make sure the brackets are square because if they're not, over time they'll come loose and they'll start rubbing and mo the tank will start moving and they'll eventually damage your tank. So it is well you do this but I'd also recommend every 12 months that you get underneath your van and you check all your connections haven't moved, aren't deteriorating, or going to cause you a problem in the near future. Right. <clears throat> 
Well, I guess I shouldn't have done that. That's just moved the whole tank back about three inches. So the last five minutes have just been wasted. I'll need to do it all again. Any job where you're working on your back, trying to fit things to the underside of your van, is never going to be easy. You're going to come across problems, and the one thing I would suggest is just go with it. Don't fluster yourself, don't get stressed out. Just do what you've got to do, get the job done, and laugh it off later. There's some days I was ready to just walk away from this project, but I've persevered, and I've got a fantastic van now. These are the jobs that nobody ever sees and nobody ever appreciates you've done. Everything that's under the van is under the van. It's never going to be seen. And to be honest with you, once you start using your van, you'll never really consider it until your tank fills up with water and you've got it emptied. Or you have a hard winter and it bursts a hose. I've just had to replace the filler hose on the fresh water tank. Um, the frost of the last few weeks absolutely destroyed it. And another thing you'll come to learn while you're building your van is you'll be able to work blind. Some of these jobs you'll be putting your hands into places and yourself into positions where you can't even see what you're doing. And it's all done by touch and feel and sound. You know, you know something's tightening up. You can't see it tightening up, but you can hear the ratchet's getting a little bit different in tone. So you learn. You learn new tricks, you learn new skills. Uh, every day is a school day. Once you're happy that your brackets are all lined up and square to the tank, there's nothing to stop you just tightening this right up. Once you once you know that it's in the right place, it's, a, it's just a one-off job. Get it tightened up. You don't need to keep it loose and go do the front and come and do the back. Just get on with it, get it fired up. Just keep an eye on your brackets and make sure they're square to the tank. And then once I'm happy that everything's right and nice and tight, I fit the two nylocks just for that peace of mind, just so I know that them nuts aren't going to back off. Maybe over time I'll have to come back and tighten them up as they settle in, but that's that'll come to light on my checks. Like I said before, this is one of them jobs that will be done all by touch. Can't see what I'm doing, and I don't need to see what I'm doing. And once you've got everything bolted up, give it a good old whack. Make sure nothing's going to fall off. <laughs> I use that test on everything. Give it a whack, see if it moves. If it moves, tighten it up a bit more. If it moves again, nail it down, glue it down. Or weld it. 
works fine for me. It's then just a matter of buttoning up them nylock nuts, make sure the tank never falls off. Once the tank's secure, it's just a matter of starting to connect up the pipework. This is a hand tight connection for ease and convenience really. If something happens on the side of the road or while we're on a site and we, you know, we've got a problem with water there, I can easily lean under the van and disconnect that. It's then just a matter of securing that pipe to the bodywork to stop it rubbing and moving and putting any holes in it. As I said at the start of the video, this is going to be my U-bend. This will stop any nasty smells from making their way back up into the shower. So we've got the drain in. You need to drain down the system when it's full. Waste tank level sensors are in now. All the pipe work's done. That's the pipe work that runs across to the shower connection. This pipe work here is... Let me just get past the prop shaft. This pipe work here runs across and pops out. You can't really see that, can you? That's into the side of the step. So that's all done now, cleated. The sensor pops up through the floor now. We have a dropout vent I put in this morning as well. But the bottom of the van is looking just about done now, I think. There's uh, very little left to do. I am going to do... Um, I'm going to heat shrink that. Them two connections, I'm not very happy with them. Um, poor quality, to be honest. Um, we'll definitely heat shrink the ends of them. Just need to buy some heat shrink that's big enough. And then that's that job done as well. Hello Dolly. Where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going to say hello? Hello doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. This is inside the van, so inside the step, up, and it goes off at an angle and then connects by flexible hose up to the bottom of the sink. You've seen that tap running, you've seen that sink getting filled, the shower works, that drains into the tank, the tank's located under there on that side of the vehicle, under, on the underside of the vehicle, and that's it finished. Yes, we're back in the van. Should take that hat off. It's my hair like. Anyway, let's have a go. Right, we're back in the van. Um, it's been a while. I don't know why I stopped sitting in the van to do the videos. I enjoyed it. I think it lets you see how we're getting on. A few changes. Curtains. Don't know where you're at in the videos. Uh, light switch. Light. Um, this week we've achieved a massive milestone. And that milestone was... We sent off the documents for the van to be changed to a motor caravan. Um, fingers crossed, everything goes well. I've uh, I've included all the pictures that it requests you to include, and I've used their term terminology on the back because you've got to put a little bit of a description in there as well of what the picture shows. So multiple pictures. Um, some will show multiple different things, like uh, the outside will show two windows. It'll show an awning. It'll show a separate door for access to the living area. Um, you know, just them sort of things. But what I kind of did was I studied the paperwork, I studied their terminology, and I wrote my descriptions to encompass the words they used. So um, one is it must have two windows that allow, on, on one side of the vehicle at least, that allow adequate daylight into the living area so i've wrote that on the back of one of these pictures wrote that on the back of a few of these pictures and i've also included my registration on the back of every picture so they can't misplace them or i'll get them mixed up with anybody else's application hopefully they don't do that but you never know so yeah we've uh, we've got there so it's actually <laughs> it's took a little bit longer than i expected because i never stopped working through the whole pandemic i went to work all the time i had three weeks off in the middle while the company i was contracting to had a little bit of a what can we say a panic or a, a bit of blind compliance with with the furlough and rules 
not that I was entitled to be furloughed, but at the end of the day, it was what it was. Um, for them three weeks, I got a bit done on the van. I panicked a lot and I started a few jobs around the house. And again, we've completely transformed our back garden. We've built walls, we've built a nursery for my wife, for her business. We've altered all the drive and all the while we've been working on the van as well. So it's been a, it's been a busy year. But in that year, I've took this joiner's van and turned it into what I wanted to buy, basically, from from the internet, from the, the motorhome shows that I've been to, from the magazines I've read, um, from the vans we've actually hired. You know, we've, we've created our best scenario. If I started again, would I change anything? Maybe I'd alter a couple of little things. I maybe wouldn't put a cassette toilet in. I'd maybe put a commode in that style of toilet, one you can lift out and move around. I don't know. But I'm happy with what I've done. Um, what else is there? Yeah, thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you very, very much. Um, thank you for all the shares and the likes as well. Just one thing, if we could make... If you're going to like the video, if you could go on to YouTube and like it there, um, if you're going to share it or comment, comment on it on there. What it does, that changes the analytics for the channel. Uh, for the channel, and um, it's a weird science. It's a dark art, but basically, the more people like, share, and comment and subscribe, um, that changes the analytics of the channel. The click-through rate. Um, still need to get my head around all that, but what it does, it will. The more you interact, the more it will recommend us to other people that have similar interests and like this style of video or or are looking for this style of video a little how to how have you done this and you know my videos aren't there to treat teach anybody how to build a van it's just my experience it's documenting my journey um, and hopefully people can learn by the mistakes I make and if you're watching the videos you've seen I've made a few um, but I didn't go into this for a plan I'm not one of these guys who sat down and drew it all out and measured everything. I just knew what I wanted. I bought the kit. I stuck the kit in. And if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, I found somewhere else for it to go. But I knew I wanted a separate water heater from a, from an air heater. So I bought a Chinese heater, put that under the seat. I put a water heater out the back. Um, I made sure that my, di my heater ran off diesel that was connected to the tank. Because I'll always have diesel in my tank. If I don't have diesel in my tank, I'm stupid. Um, so you can survive most things. But you'll not survive a cold, cold night in a van. I never want to come back out in one. So the reason behind I connected it to the diesel tank was for that reason. Hot water, end of day. Hot water, if you've got a standalone system, it's very easy to fix. And that's what I want. I wanted systems that if something went wrong... I'm the guy who's installing it, I'm the guy who's going to be fixing it. So I wanted to be able to understand how everything can be fixed. And if you have multiple systems that all operate on the same circuit boards and stuff like that, it's a little bit complicated. So I made that decision. I made sure that my cooker worked on gas, my microwave works off the inverter and a 240 hookup. My fridge works on all three. Still not comfortable with that fridge. Don't like it. I'm going to maybe change it in the future. Um, my shower is a douche shower, um, you hold the button, you wash yourself, you hang it back up, you soap yourself up, you wash yourself off and rinse. And that is it, that's the most efficient way to have a shower in a motorhome. You can't stand there for 20 minutes under the shower, you'll fill your waste tank and you'll empty your fresh water tank. You'll be filling it up day after day. So that was the idea about putting the douche handle on. The only way I could ever get my wife to go anywhere with me in this motorhome, we had to have a toilet and we had to have a shower. So that this section of the van here is all for Lisa. I could have done with nipping into sports centres, having a wash in a truck stop. Um, but I can't expect Lisa to do that, you know. I would, I would have managed. Um, could have used that space for something else. But now it's in and I've got it, I absolutely love it. And I can't wait to be out there using it. It gives us another another string. Oh, well, we, you know, we are self-sufficient with this. 
I've got solar on the roof. I want it to be independent. You know, I want it to be able to charge my batteries while I'm driving. And when I'm not driving, let the solar take care of that. We've got that facility. Everything is how I want it. Um, I might change the solar a little bit. I might put some bigger panels on. Um, I might change the CTEC charging system and put a Vitron on there. CTEC limits how much input can go in from what I've read and understand. So maybe that was the wrong purchase for me. Maybe that's one of the things that I would change. Um, I'm pointing down there because that's where it is in the van. But everything else I'm so happy with. I'm stoked with, to be honest. Um, I love it and I just want to get away with it. And once we get away, we're going to be posting some fantastic videos on the places that we visit and the places we go and what's there facilities for people like me and you and people watching this channel and especially people with young kids because i know myself when i go places it's a struggle you get a you get a crappy day and you're like right what we're going to do to occupy him and you know he's quite happy to sit on his xbox or his playstation or his switch i want to be able to go to places that i've never been before be able to find something for him to do as well as us to do keep him occupied so that's that's where we're going to go with the channel after the van's finished and uh we've shown you the van to her so that'll be the that's a video i'm working on now um it's going to take a lot because there's a lot to show you um i don't know don't know how to do it to be honest i know what i want to do visually um but it's just achieving that but hey thanks again Welcome to the new subscribers. If you're loving what we're doing, please share with other people. Um, my video skills are getting slightly better. Um, I'm not as, <laughs> what's the word, naive as I used to be. Um, so hopefully the quality of the videos will pick up. And, oh yeah, another piece of information. I actually passed my C2C um, A2 drone license this week as well. Something I've been working towards for a while. Um, and i've got it now so you should see more footage of the the drone up spent all that money on that bloody drone and the government made it well they're making it so i can't fly it anywhere really in a couple of years um i'll have to climb to the top of a mountain to fly it or go deep into the valley bottom to fly it it's where nobody lives and nobody goes but anyway that's another subject um but yeah thanks for watching take care we'll see you next time